Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am officially in Åland or at Åland, on Åland, whatever you say. I'm gonna play Åland Open here at Västerkalmare and uh, we just made it to the course so we're gonna film some practice shots and uh, I'll take you through my mental preparation for the run. See you there. All right, hole one is done. Starting off with a easy hole. I think I'm going midnight prowl on a high surf flip, trying to push it straight. I got a easy birdie now. But here in hole two, it's really weird. The basket is all the way over there. And there's a mando and not even a throwing line. Steep high surf pushing it up, go left as far as possible. Very weird hole. I don't think there's gonna be that many birdies this week. That's perfect, got the skip as well. This shot was better than perfect. I'm not expecting even one of my rounds to land this close to the basket. Hole four, 77 meters, straight uphill. I don't know if I'm going flippy or overstable. Let's see. I think overstable is the way to go. It's easier to hit the gap if I try to push it towards the left side with a bit of any. Like I said, I think it's a bigger chance to hit the gap with the overstable disc. But as you see, a pretty perfect shot is a little bit short. So I think it has a bigger chance to get to the basket with the understable one. But I'm still gonna go with the overstable just to be safe and hit the gap. Because it's really easy to take like bogey and double bogey if you miss the gap. like money. Hole 6 is the first hole that I'm playing for par. 223 meters uphill, par 4. I can't reach it. Let's go for par. Not really my type of shot, so I'm gonna be happy with the par here, but I'm attacking for the birdie. The hole was actually a lot shorter than I thought it was. It looked a lot further from the tee, but my shrike was actually in the circle and then I got a birdie. I think I'm going shrike or Hades on a baby heiser, letting it flip and turn to the right. I can get a birdie on this one, that's good to know. Hole 8, first hole that should be a gimme. 71 meters straight ahead. A bit of a gap in the beginning, but after that it opens up. Let's just go with a straight shot, MD1. That should be fine. If I hit the gap, that should be a birdie every time. Hole 9 is the second hole that should be a gimme. In my eyes, it's a must get. I got is probably the perfect speed. Fuck, va? Det är stabilt. Jag gillar hur den flyger för den är... Hå 
hole 11, 400 meters. I'm gonna play it safe, but I'm still gonna try to get the distance. So if I get up here for a look, I'm gonna try to get the birdie, but I'm gonna play it safe, so I'm happy with the par. I played this course earlier this summer, and here on hole 12, even though it feels like there's no wind, you need to look at the flags further out, because the wind comes out from behind these bushes. Straight layup or big smash, try to get it over. Let's try both. Laying up with the MD1. Should be an easy part. Let's try one with a forehand. Too short, not the play. When I played hole 14 here earlier this summer, I went for the layup, but then I went for a big shot and tried to get over, and I realized it was much easier than I thought it was. So I'm gonna try with the DD3 and get over to the second safe zone, and from there try to get a birdie. That was a really bad shot, but it's still over. I might actually go for the CD3 in the tournament. So easy. Fifty-eight meters. All right, here at hole 16, OB everywhere. 293 meter par five. I'm just gonna do three 100 meter safe shots and attack for the birdie, but I'm still happy with a par here as well because there's OB everywhere and I think par should maybe gain strokes on the field. Safe. Easy high side, maybe a bit shorter than I wanted, but should be manageable. We didn't record the rest, but here's hole 18. I just play for par here, way too risky to go for it, especially because of the OB bunker before the green. Quick room tour. This is the cabin. We just had breakfast. That's the kitchen. Room tour done. First round today, I tee off at 10 past 3 and uh, I feel excited. I feel like I have control and I feel like the course suits me pretty well. Yesterday when I was playing the practice round, I went minus six and I think that is a pretty good score. So now I just need a shave because this looks horrible. Then we're off to warm up. And you might ask yourself, where is the nearest course? Well, I can show you. Do you see that? We're living on a horse. So, like, if I run, I have 12 seconds to the first tee pad, which is behind this cabin right here. Very nice. And big open fields, so I can practice throwing far as well. Very nice. 
Last player of this card, please welcome from Sweden, sponsored by Järva Disc Golf Store, Kevin Klangebo. Round one is officially over and uh, I got mixed feelings. I felt like I was in control. I felt like I was shooting good, hitting my lines. My putting felt okay, but I just couldn't get the birdies. I think I got three birdies on the front nine. And then when I got to the back nine, I got eight pars in a row. I got the most pars round one in the entire field. I got 72% par, which is like, 13 parts I think. Like I said, I felt in control, but I just couldn't score. What do I want to change for next round? I want to be more aggressive. Um, there was a lot of wind on today's round, so it was hard to actually like be aggressive. I was pretty aggressive and I got a lot of opportunities to get some birdies. And like I said, eight parts in a row on the back nine, that's just not good. And I actually missed what I think is like the easiest hole on the course. Hole 14 I think. Missed the birdie putt on that one because my layup was a bit too far to the right. It was a left to right wind that pushed it a bit so it didn't really fade, it just dropped down. So it's just outside the circle and uh, yeah, got a par there as well. But then on the last hole, on hole 18, it's a par 4, 250 meters. I'm playing it for par. I'm laying up twice, then just a hyzer, pitch up to the basket, get my par and then I'm done with the round. And that's what I tried to do, but that's not what happened. I laid up the first shot with a battery forehand, but I laid it up very short, like 20 meters shorter than I should have. It wasn't really a bad throw, it was just, I didn't think what I was going to do. So I didn't commit to actually laying it up to the far side OB. So when I did the second layup and I threw it like I was supposed to from where I was supposed to be on the first shot, I actually went out of bounds, which was really unnecessary and very annoying. And from there, I, I had 90 meters to the basket and I ended up nine and a half meters short and I missed that putt as well. So I got a double bogey on the last hole, which was really annoying because I would have been okay with minus two. To be happy, I want to be at least minus four, but I know I can score much better than that as well. I got minus six yesterday on the practice round and that's actually 1030 rated. So I know I can score out here. I just had to commit and be aggressive and get the birdies. I'm gonna be more aggressive and I'm gonna hit some longer putts. But like I said, I feel good. I know I can score out here. Let's just do it tomorrow. I believe in myself. After the round, we went to Megusta Burgers. 
had a really nice burger, some really cool fries as well. After that, we went down to the water, threw some skipping stones, um, went back to the cabin, just hung out. Now I'm out here with two Lunas, getting my confidence up. But I want to be more aggressive tomorrow, so let's try to do that. Fourth player of the sponsored Yerva Disc Golf Store, Kevin Klagebo. After round two was done, I didn't feel much different from the first round. It was just that I had a slow start because of the rain, but I got things going on the back nine. After that, I knew that I could get it done on the front nine, which I did in the first round. And now I knew I could get it done on the back nine as well. So after round two, it was just about getting it all together and getting an actual good round the whole round through. After the round was done, we went to this restaurant called Pizza Diablo. And me and my father had a kebab pizza and a taco pizza that we split half and half. And it was amazing. If you're at Åland, you need to visit this place. Sponsored by Järva Disc Golf Store. Welcome, Kevin Klangebo.
The event is over and this picture of me on hole 18 describes the last round pretty well. It felt like I had no energy and I couldn't control my body for the first 6 to 7 holes. Then I got some energy back and played okay, then I lost it again. Last round, plus 4, plus 2 in total. It didn't go as planned, but I had lots of fun playing one of the best courses I've played. Played with lots of great people and learned a lot. I'll be back next week in the Swedish Championship. After round 3 we went into the city again and we ate at this restaurant called Dino's Bar and Grill. It was pretty expensive, but holy shit. I had some ribs and honestly it was the best ribs I've ever had. They were amazing. I'm sitting here editing the video. I just want to make an outro and uh, thank you guys for the support. Thank you for watching my videos. Remember to like and subscribe and comment down below what you want to see next. And I'll see you guys in next week's video where I'm playing in the Swedish Championships. So, see you there. Peace.